Hello and welcome back to EGE 2013 Statics here at Lawrence Technological University. I'm Jim Kearns. We're going to stick with our friction examples and look at one more thing we need to consider when we're looking at friction and movement of objects. And that is a question of does the object slip or does it tip? This is an important consideration. You know, sometimes you knock a, into a lamp, it falls over. And sometimes you have a little brother to blame and sometimes you don't. But let's, let's talk about this from an engineering perspective. So here we have a person pushing on a refrigerator. The force is increasing. And as that force increases, we create a moment, you know, based on that force and this perpendicular distance here, okay? And as that moment increases, the effective position of the normal force has to move to maintain static equilibrium. Because what we want is the sum of the moments. There's a, there's a moment here, that force, and that distance. This force, if we're taking the moments about this point here, and this distance. And of course, this force, the normal force, reaction force, and that distance there, okay? The sum of all those moments have to be equal to zero. So let's continue on the video and see what happens as this effective position of the normal force gets to the edge. So we're pushing harder and harder. We're getting close to the edge. And at some point, we get right there. And boom, if we keep pushing, over she goes. OK, let me rewind this just a little bit here. And let's take a look at this point. Now, obviously, if we stopped pushing, okay, if we eliminated this force, the refrigerator would set right back down, right? But if we keep pushing, the, the further over this tips, the smaller the distance between these two points get, okay? At some point, the mass of the refrigerator is right over that, and any movement beyond that, and away she goes. Okay. So at this point, let's get into our example problem and see a couple different ways that we can do this analysis to make the determination whether or not it slips or it tips. Since politics seem to be in the news lately, at least as of when I'm recording this video, I thought I'd do my best here to keep things relevant to the current what's going on. Uh, so here is an example from 1968. Okay, not not quite current, but... 1968 Democratic National Convention in Chicago, uh, George McGovern versus Hubert Humphrey. Uh, there are a lot of anti-war demonstrators there, and the mayor Daley of Chicago decided the uh, best defense is a really offensive offense. Things got out of hand, okay? So this picture here shows a number of protesters trying to tip over a police vehicle. So the question becomes, a, can they move that, right? Can we make it move? And if it moves, does it slip or does it tip? So let's go to the next slide and see some of the assumptions we're going to use in this solving this problem. For the sake of analysis, let's assume the vehicle weighs 4,000 pounds. It's six feet wide. The protesters are applying horizontal force five feet above the ground. We have a coefficient of friction of 0.7. Center gravity is in the middle. And we want to determine the force necessary to move the vehicle and then to show if it will slip or tip when it does finally move, if it moves. And we're going to just neglect any motion due to the vehicle suspension. We're going to treat it as a rigid body just to keep our life simple and use this as an easy example. Okay. Our first step, of course, the free body diagram, right? So there it is. We have our vehicle. We have the tires, which we're assuming to be rigid. We have a applied force five feet above the ground. We have the mass of the vehicle. We have the normal force here, which is upwards somewhere at some distance x from this, this corner here, a. And as they push, there is, of course, the friction force. Okay. So let us count how many unknowns we have here. We've got the applied force. We've got the normal force. We've got the friction force. And we, of course, have the location of the normal force, which varies in order to maintain a static equilibrium where the sum of the moments about that point A equals zero. And then we also have the question, will it slip or will it tip? So that really gives us 
five things we don't know, and we typically have three equations of equilibrium. We've dealt with four unknowns by adding the friction equation as appropriate uh, if it's an impending motion problem. Uh, but we got the slip or tip. How do we handle that? Well, you guess. We make the assumption that either A, it will slip, or B, it will tip, and then we work the problem and see if we were right. And I will work it both ways, just to illustrate the process both ways. Our first work through here, we're going to assume that it's going to tip. Okay, So we're going to assume that we're applying just the right force here to get this get all the weight off of that wheel and our our location of the normal force is right here on the edge okay so our x is equal to zero in this case so we've eliminated a variable we've made an assumption about what's going to happen and now we have our problem down to one two three unknowns and one two three equations of e equilibrium once we sort out the equations of equilibrium and find our friction, we can compare it to our uh, equation for static friction and see if the friction is sufficient to hold this thing in place and let it tip, or if there's not enough friction and it would have slid instead. Starting, some of the forces in the x direction equals zero. I have P and I've got F, so I can say P is positive. P minus F equals zero, so I can say that the friction force is equal to that applied protester force. Some of the forces Y equals zero, I have the weight of the vehicle, 4,000 pounds force. I have the reaction force here, minus 4,000 plus N equals zero, so I can say that N equals 4 thousand pounds upward in the direction it's drawn. So far so good. Some of the moments about A equals zero. Um, because it's about A, those two forces don't enter into our equation at all. So we just have the moments from the applied force and the weight of the vehicle. So my moment from the weight is four thousand pounds times three feet and that's counterclockwise, so it's positive, minus our unknown P um, times that distance of 5 feet. If I solve for P, I get P equals 2,400 pounds to make it tip. Okay, So if those protesters can apply 2,400 pounds at that 5-foot distance, and if it doesn't slip, it will then tip. Well, the question is, did it tip or did it slip? Well, this is 2,400 pounds. My static friction equation here, I know is equal to the available static friction is 0 0.7, our coefficient of frictions, times 4,000 pounds, our normal force, and that is equal to 2,800 pounds. Okay, so this is the available friction this is the friction necessary to hold it in place so it tips. Since this is greater than this, we know that the vehicle will in fact tip before it slides. Okay, so let's look at the one more case. In our second method for solving this, we'll assume that it slips. Okay, in this case, x is not equal to zero. But since we're assuming that there is the slip, that we will reach that static friction value before anything else happens, we can use this as our fourth equilibrium equation, okay? So we can solve for our four unknowns. As, of, as before, some of the forces in the x direction equals zero. That's P minus F, and again, P, it's equal to F and we're assuming that it's going to reach that static friction value. So I can take this equation and I have 0 0.7 times 4,000 and as before I get the 2,800 pounds, right? So P equals F which is equal to 2,800 pounds force. Some of the forces Y equals 0. Again it's N minus 4 and so n equals 4 
thousand pounds force as before. Some of the moments about A have to be equal for it to be in static equilibrium at the point where the friction is equal to 2,800 pounds. I have 4,000 pounds at a distance of 3 feet, and that's counterclockwise, positive 4,000 times 3. I've got P times 5 feet, and that's clockwise negative, negative P times 5. And I have my normal force here at some distant x, again minus, because it's clockwise, minus n times x, okay? And if I solve for x, I get x equals minus 0 0.5 feet, okay? So now when I did this calculation, I was assuming that x was this distance here. So if x is minus, that means that that normal force ends up effectively being out here at the point where the friction, static friction, is equal to this value, which gives me an applied force of 2,800 pounds. Given that we can't have that normal force applied somewhere that's not even underneath our object, right? Uh, we know that when the normal force got to right there, the thing tipped over. So we know in this case that the vehicle tipped, okay? And we'd have to kind of redo the problem a little bit to see exactly at which force it tipped. Because all we know is it's something less than that 2800. Essentially, we just repeat this calculation with x equal to zero. And instead of solving for x, we'd solve for the p, and that would give us our number. I hope you found that useful in some way, shape, or form. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the flip side.